So welcome back to the channel and today's video is filmed from Hollywell Golf Club and I will be asking in this video another really serious question. And that question is quite simply, why do manufacturers continue to make these golf clubs? See, I've done plenty of videos on this channel about, well, how to make this, uh, this game just that little bit easier. But if you want to make that game just a little bit harder, then, uh, well, look no further. Because these golf clubs are the most difficult to use for almost every golfer. And we'll also see in this video why Loft plays Unewell 1, minor part of the equation when it determines just how high your ball flies. You see, the loft on the clubs that I'm referring to that manufacturers will, should quite frankly, maybe consider stop making, it's 18 degrees, which is exactly the same as what's on this five wood. But the ball flight is nothing like that one. Go. So the clubs in question are, of course, driving irons, and maybe more specifically, they're two irons. Two of these have got 18 degrees aloft, and I think one of them's maybe 17 or 17.5. A potential nightmare in my hands. And we'll kick things off here, where I'm gonna play, I've got two irons, but I've also got five wood with the equivalent loft. And I wanna see and try and work out why anyone in their right mind might consider putting these in the bag over a five wood equivalent. <laughs> So I have three models up here with me today, the TaylorMade P790 UDI, I've got the Mizuno Pro Fly High, and I've got the two iron crossover from Ping. And I'll be honest with you, from a visual perspective, then hell, I would have these in my bag all day long. They look absolutely superb. But unfortunately, on this one occasion, I'm always swayed by looks, and I say with your buy with your eyes first quite often, but, uh, I think I perhaps need a rethink on that one. So the first shot you're gonna see me hit is with this two iron, the fly high from Mizuno. I've gotta say out of the three of them, it probably gives me a bit more help and it's the less scary if you like in the fact that it's got a bit more bulk and mass on it. But even so, you'll see that ball flight is incredibly low. We're playing downwind here on the third hole at Hollywell. The greens, are, the fairways rather, are really firm and fiery and it's the ideal opportunity to get the most out of a driving iron because this ball has run for a long, long way even though it didn't carry that far. The second ball I hit was with the five wood, and I say that's gonna be the comparison. You'll see a totally different ball face is the first thing. It doesn't run as far, but ultimately, if you look at where the two uh, balls finished, there's probably about 20 yards in terms of overall distance. But holes three and seven run parallel, and we're very much played seven next, which is very much into the wind, and a totally different story, one that uh, perhaps surprised me a little in the fact that decent two iron again, and pretty, pleased with the first two strikes and better than I expected kept the ball low and obviously it's chased up again but that wasn't the case with the five iron in the sense that it didn't run on I thought playing into the wind it might be a bit detrimental to the five with the higher ball flight but yet again we've seen similar distances in terms of uh, the, the gap if you like was again at least 20 yards so on those first two shots with each there was a notable difference in terms of very much in favor of the five wood, in my opinion, in terms of ball flight, in terms of where it finished, but mainly in terms of confidence at address. And then of course there's the question of versatility and when you've managed to get that ball off a tee peg that's one question answered but then from the fairway well that's another one again as you can see a real tight liar on the uh, fairways up at Hollywell and trying to play a two iron off of that tight liar well, it's almost comparable in my eyes to playing driver unless you've got the real pure strike then for my case you're always going to squeeze it out to the right which I did and then you see the comparison product which I'm suggesting 18 degree five wood and oh my God, what a difference in where the distance traveled, but the ball flight is so, so different. But I'm playing where uh, my two iron came to rest. Kick up, kick up. These are firm, it's making its way there. But in all seriousness, every top brand is making this product. They've got them in their lineup. So, uh, well, my question is, 
is who of you out there is actually buying these? Go in, go in. And realistically, I think we all know the answer to that question. It is very much elite players and uh, certainly not the minority. But even if you fall into that category of, um, of an elite player, I think even then, it perhaps depends on sort of what type of golf course you play most of your golf on. Because otherwise, I still feel this is a pretty redundant golf club even with the best ball strikers out there. Now, I said at the start of this video that uh, I would ask a question. Hopefully, like with most videos, I like to ask a few. And uh, ultimately, the one that's in my head right now is, who in the right mind would want to stand over a ball looking at uh, either this or this? And uh, I think I certainly know my answer, and I reckon I know for most average golfers why, so that still begs the question, how come these things are still being manufactured? It must be really for a very small minority. Right, I'm taking a five wood lie this time. Has it got the legs? It's online, it's got to go I think. Ah, that's just short. Now the next two shots you're gonna see me hit off the tee will, uh, I perhaps generated a little bit more club head speed with the uh, two iron, got a little bit of a better ball flight, but again, just so much easier with that five wood in hand. I always explain it's sort of half a swing, but certainly not a great deal of effort or not anywhere near as much effort as I feel I need to make with that two iron and the ball soared what seemed to be a sort of 20 foot higher and uh, bullet straight. It's just as good as I've hit the two irons and they perhaps surprised me a little bit. Those two shots in particular side by side just highlight just how much easier the five wood is to play. I'm still confused as to why anybody might want a two iron in their bag. Comments down below, there must be some of you out there using them. Now I think I might have just found the use for every two iron that's been manufactured out there and that's if, uh, well if you lose or snap your putter in anger, they come in as a real good backup. But jokes aside, I've perhaps been a little bit harsh on two irons, but uh, you get my drift, no doubt. These are wonderful specimens of golf clubs they each perform perhaps far better than they should in terms of the way they look. And like I said, perhaps I was also a little bit surprised as to how well I hit them. But the only thing I can't understand is irrelevant of that, just how I would possibly fit one of those in my bag. What would be the reasoning and the justification? And like I said, only perhaps the course type that you play and your obviously level of skill and ability will determine that as well. But even at that level, I cannot see how a five wood equivalent would not do you a better job. But as ever, I'm happily proven wrong and uh, it's just my opinion and how I see these clubs and where I see them right now. Why are manufacturers continuing to put these things on the shelf? You tell me the answers down below because some of you must be buying them. As ever, thank you for watching. Thanks for to Hollywell Golf Club for allowing me to film. I've got a feeling we might be up here just a little bit more. Right, I'm off. See you soon.